everybody and welcome to Go 10, number five, get organized in 10 minutes a day. With me, I'm Tiffany Spaulding and this is session number five and we're gonna talk about organizing your unmounted stamps today. They can be acrylic or red rubber stamps, anything that's unmounted. If you have mounted stamps, woodies, we like to call them, don't worry, we're gonna get to that next week or maybe the week after, we'll see how I'm feeling. Anyway, we're gonna talk about those unmounted stamps today, but before we start talking about unmounted stamps, we need to talk about you. We need to know what kind of a collector you are. Are you a got a little or are you got a lot? Because that's gonna make a difference of how you apply the information from today's class. So if you're a got a little, I'm gonna define that as somebody who gets things like these pumpkin stamps with the Imagine S uh, Halloween kit, but you're not actually a stamper, right? So you just have a few random stamps that you've collected that match a specific project pack or um, they came in a kit or maybe you bought a stamp to do a project. You're not really a stamper, it's just kind of a little add-on for you. You're a got a little. We're gonna address your uh, situation one way. And then if you're a got a lot, that means you have a lot of stamps. Those were all my stamps that you just saw flashing before your eyes, right? And I had to organize them for this class to teach you how to do it. So you're going to get the shortened version. I'm not going to make you watch me organize all those stamps that were in that pile. Let's start with, oh, so got a lot. You have lots of stamps and you definitely intend to get more stamps. You're somebody who loves stamping. Maybe you love all kinds of crafts, but you also love to share your stamps with your crafting pal. So it's really important that they're organized so that other people can share them and use those with joy in their hearts, right? That's why you bought them. So you could use them and share them with your friends. So let's start now. There's these people in the middle, the middle people. These are people who have a few stamps, but potentially could become God a lot. So if you think that stamping is something that you're going to get into and that you're really going to enjoy and that you're going to collect more stamps, then you want to follow the Got A Lot program so that you don't end up playing catch up later. So let's just talk quickly about Got A Littles. For Got A Littles, you're just going to take those acrylic stamps and incorporate them right into whatever category they belong in. So these little guys right here, this bat, these buttons, this pumpkin, these are all Halloween stamps. And if you've been following along with us from week one, you know that we already have a fall section going in our four section system. What we don't have in the fall section of our four section system is a small page. And I'm gonna use this um, Traders 12 page because I don't have any little stuff yet in Halloween or fall. And I'm just gonna slip each one of these little stamps right into a pocket and then I'm going to put this page right into my fall section. Now if you already started your fall section and you have empty pockets in your fall section, you don't need to add another page. I just know that I don't. So I'm going to go right here to the calendar section which we've been working um, on for the last five weeks and I'm going to pull it off. If you're using a scrap rack, you want to um, take your spinders off your base unit before you add new pages to it. I'm just going to pop that open and I'm going to put this right here in the front of fall because the pockets are small. And now I have my, um, whoa. And now I have my Halloween stamps incorporated right into my calendar year section with all of the rest of my fall goodies. So when I'm working on something, they're going to pop up for me, even though I'm not a stamper, they're going to pop up and I'm going to see them and I'm probably going to use them. Um, even though I might not have because they would have been stashed away in a drawer. So that's really easy if you're a got a little. You're just going to incorporate it in. If you're not using a scrap rack, then you're going to incorporate that in to whatever your uh, method of choice is. So if you're using Ziploc bags or file folders or those little clear plastic boxes, you're going to put those stamps right in with everything else, right? Regardless of the tool you're using, incorporate those in. You people have it easy. It's gonna be an easy week for you. You just have to find those acrylic stamps and integrate them into your four section system. You may not use 10 minutes every day for the next six days doing that. But for the got a lot, whew, you got a lot going on, gals, a lot going on. So how are you gonna organize all of those stamps, right? There's so many different kinds. Some of you are just uh, close to my heart people. Some of you use all the different kinds of stamps. You're going to treat them all essentially the same way. It's a pretty simple process. You are going to gather together your stamps and then 
you are going to create a catalog of those stamps. And it's really simple. Your catalog is going to follow along with your four section system, right? So you're going to have an alpha page, alpha numerics page, you're going to have themes pages, calendar year page. You're not going to have any rainbow because obviously you might have a stamp that is a rainbow, but that's going to go in the happy day section, whatever you're going to call it. We'll call it spring. All right, so you're going to make an impression of each of those stamps where it belongs in your um, catalog. So catalog, super simple. I use uh, 12 by 12 paper to create my catalog because I'm actually going to keep my catalog in my scrap rack. You could also use 8.5 by 11 paper to create your catalog. You're just going to write the name of the section at the top. And then you're going to make an impression of each one of those stamps right on that catalog page, right? Okay, so I, you'll notice I photocopied my stamps. Right? That's because I didn't want to clean them by making all those impressions. I put a bunch of them on the photocopier. So if you're using photocopier, you can put a bunch on your photocopier. If you have a legal size paper or legal size copier, you can do even more on one sheet. And then you can make all those impressions without dirtying up your stamp. So it'll be a little bit faster in the first run to do it that way. Or if you want to play with your stamps, you can ink them up and stamp them on each page where they belong. So you've got your stamp, you've got your catalog page, but now what are you going to do with the stamp? right? You're going to catalog that stamp by number. So here's my little example page. You can see that I've labeled all of the pockets on this page. They start with the number 16. That's because this is a 16 pocket page. So I'm going to be able to hold at least 16 little small stamps in here. If I was really gutsy, I could put two stamps in each pocket, one on the front, one showing through to the back, and then I would be able to get 32 stamps into one page. Don't fear the pocket. Don't be afraid that your stamps aren't going to, that your pocket's not going to hold up. If you're using a scrap rack, it's going to easily accommodate two stamps in there. Some people don't like it because it's kind of bulky, but it does really condense down your um, stamps. So now my little I love you stamp, which I put a representation of on the Valentine's Day page of my uh, catalog sheet, is going to go into that first pocket. So now that stamp number is 16101. Right? All I'm going to do is take my pencil, my handy dandy pencil, and where I made that impression on my catalog sheet, I'm just going to write 16 101. And now I know where that stamp is in my system. Okay. Now I've got my stamp on my catalog sheet, I've got my stamp filed away, I've got all these empty pockets, right? But as I'm going through my pile, oh, the next thing I find is a travel stamp, right? So the travel stamp, I'm going to go to my page. Now these are just example pages, right? I'm going to show you an actual catalog once we're done. This is just to give you the steps. I'm going to take that travel stamp. I'm going to put it on the travel page. Now I'm using Velcro on there, but you're not going to be using Velcro. This is just for my sample. Now this one is going to become 16102. So it has nothing to do with Valentine's Day, but it doesn't matter. My goal is to fill my sheets efficiently and be able to reference my um, stamps quickly and easily, and that's where the catalog is going to serve me so well. So I put that, that little stamp in. Stamp is 16102. I'm going to write 16102 on my little sheet here, and I'm going to go to my next stamp. Oh, and what is it? My next stamp is this bigger stamp. It's the uh, Aloha stamp. It could be perfect for summer, or it could be perfect for travel if I was going to Hawaii or somewhere tropical, but also great for summer. The sunshine, the palm tree, all that stuff. In that case, I want to make two copies of the summer stamp because it's going to go in two categories, travel and summer, right? So I made two copies of it. I'm going to put one of them in the travel, I'm going to stamp one of them in the travel page or stick it down to the travel page, and I'm going to put one of them on the summer page. And then this stamp obviously is not going to fit in these pockets. So then I'm going to go to a bigger pocket page. This is the six pocket page. This pocket, 6101. I'm going to slide my stamp in there. Now, and I'm going to, there it is. I'm going to write on both the travel page and on the summer page the same number, 6101. So I'll be able to find it no matter if I'm looking at it at travel or if I'm looking at it at travel or summer. When I'm flipping through, it's going to be in the same pocket. 6101 is where that goes, right? So you might have something that would go in a dozen categories. Maybe it's a gift box. 
A gift box or wrapped present could go on Christmas and birthday and baby and graduation and wedding and Hanukkah and Easter, anywhere that you might give somebody a gift. Um, so then you're going to make that impression or make that number of copies and put those down on your catalog for everything, right? So this is my little quick in, down and dirty example sheet so I can show you how to put these together. Oh, I forgot one thing. Then you can use a set of dividers to segment off. So this is uh, number, this divider is just marked 16. And then, so those are all the 16 pocket pages would be behind that divider, right? Pretty simple. So, okay, now you've seen my little setup for a demo just to give you the idea. Now I'm going to show you what this really looks like in action. But if you're not using a scrap rack, I'm going to show you a couple of other ways to store your unmounted stamps as well for if you're a got a lot. So I'm going to put this over here for a minute. Well, this is my big catalog. This is, are actually all the stamps. So now what I've got is I've got this binder and it's loaded up with all the different stamps and they're ta it's tabbed at the side. So remember this indicates the pocket. So I've got the 16s, the 12s, the 8s, the 6s, and those just depending on the size of the stamp. So here's what the six page looks like, right? That's that perfect six page. I can go all the way back here and now I've got the Fantastic Four where I've got those big um, square stamps, right? Some alphabet stamps in there as well. So the pocket thing works really great for storing lots of acrylic stamps and then you can just put this right onto your scrap rack and have everything together. On the other spinder is where I've set up the actual catalog. The catalog, as we discussed, follows along with the four section system. So as you go through the pages of the catalog, you'll see they start out the same way. Alphanumeric, and then we get into our themes A to Z, animals. Now here's an interesting thing. I just labeled this page B. This is a bridal stamp, the only bridal stamp that I've got. I'm sorry, I'm lying, it's a baby stamp. It's the only baby stamp I've got. I didn't want to create a whole page for a baby. I don't have a lot of baby stuff, right? My kids are teenagers. I just labeled the page B and added that stamp. Now if I come across other things that are generic B type stamp, I can just add them to this page. What you don't want to do, we talked about this for other things last week, what you don't want to do is avoid cataloging that stamp. Start a section that it fits in and get it going and then you can put it away. Don't say, oh, I just have one B stamp. I'm going to just leave it in the pile over here on the edge of my desk. You want to avoid that, just like we did with our supplies. This is a question I get regularly. What do you do with things like backgrounds? These are all pretty generic background stamps. Just start a section in B's called backgrounds. You might also have a section in S for shapes. I'll show you that in just a minute. So all of these stamps are cataloged with a corresponding number to my um, stamp storage here. Some of you are big fans of Close to My Heart, and those come in a nice little package like this, right? And as you know, I'm not an advocate for re reinventing the wheel. If you just have a few Close to My Heart stamps, and you can store them all in a little basket. You see my little Close to My Heart basket here? Close to My Heart already comes with a number. Now, the number's tiny, so I just put a sticker on there and wrote the number bigger on the package, right? The same number then I would put right here in my catalog. So this uh, French patio is B1079. If I was going to leave my stamps in these and store them in the basket, I would write B1079 and then I would be able to flip through the basket, right, to find B107. This is ac it's actually the first one, it's the lowest number I've got. And it would be right there. Now, this, you can do the same thing if you're using CD cases. So you can see this CD case is labeled CD1. If I had stamps in here, maybe this stamp was in there, right? I would write underneath the stamp CD1. The goal with the number on the catalog is it's going to direct you back to wherever that stamp is stored. So if you already have stamps in CD cases, you just need to make sure that your catalog coordinates to your CD case. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can be a little bit creative too. This is another stamp set, but I didn't want to start another thing. I have already my close to my heart and then I have my CD cases and I have my scrap rack. I didn't want to start another thing. So I just called this CD3. It's 
about the same size as the CD case. I can pop it right into the basket in slot number three. When I go to look for those stamps, they're going to be right there in the CD3 spot. So if you already have a bunch of stuff going on and you can just coordinate it and catalog it, feel free to do that, right? Um, the upside to using something like the scrap rack is that you've got all of your stamps together in one place and it's easy to take with you when you're going somewhere or to flip through and look, look, for, what, look for what you want to use um, rather than going somewhere, finding a basket or a drawer or whatever. So as you go through your catalog, you're just going to number all those things with where they might pop up. Now remember, some things are going to work in multiple categories or have stamps on them that have multiple things. So this is a travel stamp, right? It's a, it has all these Asia motifs on it, but it also has some other things. It's kind of weird, actually, because it's all Asia. And then it says, like, happy birthday. Good luck. I guess that kind of goes with uh, uh, Chinese New Year. And then it has some other little word things on there that would work in other places. Well, if it's in travel only, I'm not going to notice those things, right? So what I did was I went to my word section, and I made another copy of that stamp, and I just put the words on, on this section. Now, this is another interesting thing. The number on this is KK1. What is KK1? KK1 is what we call our clearly crafty stamp storage tray. A lot of people like to use these in a scrap rack travel pack. Uh, they're very sturdy. They hold quite a few stamps in one tray. The tray pulls apart. It comes with these little Velcro dots to help hold it together once it gets heavy with stamps. But then you've got however many stamps you want to stick in there on one page. So this is labeled KK1, Clearly Crafty uh, 1. And that's how I know where to find these particular stamps. So as you can see, it's really easy to label your stamps and to coordinate them with your catalog so that you can actually go back and find those things. So these are the stamps that are in that case CD3. If I was going to go back, and they're kind of a funky thing. Um, the reason I could have put them in the scrap rack pages, the reason I didn't is because they're magnetic, okay? And they're super heavy. I actually cut a little piece of magnet, uh, magnet cloth and put it in the pockets, but they're so heavy because they're really kind of thick, right? And they have magnet, and then they have the red rubber. So they could have fit in the scrap rack, but they were just so heavy. I just thought, oh, I'll just coat them CD3 and keep them all together. And then I have examples of what all those different words are right here in the word section. So don't be afraid to create sections that are going to work with however you think, right? So you might have words. Some people might have sentiments. You might have a page that's just thank you or one that's just bon voyage or happy retirement or congratulations or whatever it is. The beautiful thing about using a catalog is no matter how many times you make that impression or take that copy of whatever it is, you can you know, in, put it all, in as many pages of the catalog always using the same number as you want, right? Here's a little spring stamp, a little butterfly. It's the only one I had, but I went ahead and started my spring stamp section as well. So don't put it off. Right. Now I'm into my holidays and seasons, so I've got Valentine's Day, I've got my, there's that summer, right? We have that summer stamp. Really simple. And there's all those Halloween stamps that we already talked about as well. So create a catalog and then as you go through all your stamps, you can make impressions of them or you can photocopy them and add them directly to your catalog either way that you want to go. Now, the nice thing about using a catalog is that you can do, you can add to the catalog every time you pick up a stamp, right? So if you've only cataloged, you're going to work 10 minutes a day for the next six days on this. Most of you probably have a lot more stamps than that. Um, but anytime you come across a stamp, you can just say, okay, this is a small stamp. It's Christmas. I'm going to stamp it in winter or Christmas, depending on how you have it. And then you're going to go, okay, it's a number 16. I've got an empty spot right here, 16116. I'm going to give it that number, and you're set. So it works for things that you find as you're cleaning up your space, or if you buy something brand new, you're going to be able to add it to your catalog right away and then file it away so you're actually going to use it. When you're done creating your catalog and your uh, stamp storage, if you're using a scrap rack, you're going to add those right to your scrap rack. I keep mine right in the center of my scrap rack. Um, or if you're got a little, you're just going to add those individual stamps right into your different sections in your four-section system. Well, not the rainbow. We already talked about that. 
All right. Thanks so much for joining me for Go 10 number five, acrylic and unmounted stamps. I hope you get a lot of work done in the next hour at 10 minutes a day. And I look forward to talking with you again next week.